Welcome to Winternomics TV. You get fuck it. Apple, let's look at Apple real quick. So Apple's a good one to watch. Holy crap, did I leave that much stuff on Apple last time? All right, I think everybody got the gist of it. I'm gonna clear that out so I can do new stuff with Apple. So looking at Apple right now, you know, box range, yeah, it's local shockwaves where he was at. And just kind of like looking at uh, Apple, like I told you guys, you can measure waves with old waves, you know? So you look at like this wave, how big is this guy? That's the box range of that. So we measure from the low of the, of the box range. And we can see that these two legs are almost mirror images in their duration. So it's not a bad place for fucking stocks to take a breather, you know? When you look at the markup of this thing, you can look at uh, S&P 500 compared to this guy. Uh, probably not my best move. Because he didn't mark up that much. I'll just put it on the other side, SPX. There he goes. So, you know, Apple is one of your, is your biggest stock on the planet right now, or not under the side of Ramco, but in the American Stock Exchange, this is like your biggest motherfucker inside the indexes. So there's a high degree of correlation with your indexes and some of the big components, obviously, because the indexes are made from these components. Um, so we look at the market place inside of uh, the uh, S&P, and remember I gave you a breakout play in October to play in Facebook. Which is still good, by the way. If you have it, it's still good. It was 3038 breakout right here. It was a shockwave for 3038. This shockwave right here and a breakout play you could take, which is this guy. And you still could have this guy free rolling. Uh, it was a 10% move, over a trillion dollars in, in, in the uh, stock market. Uh, it's over a $2 trillion move in the, in the U.S. stock market from that breakout play. And it's still good. So at this point, the legs, you know, are matching in scale. The amplitudes are pretty similar also. So... What do we know when we get to a, 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 a climax point in the wave, the shock wave, and we at least know where the high point is, and until that fails, the next wave can't resume. So the worst case scenario is, right, we know that if this is this trend, this bull market's gonna continue, we have a great line in the sand to watch for where we can buy into higher highs that could become future lows. So until further notice, right, this guy needs to be uh, put on radar and wait for him to do something to give you an idea what to do. He could go right back in a recoil back to the top. Cool. You don't have to find yourself inside this low range. Let him prove himself first. Let this sort itself out. If it takes this kind of duration, if it goes right back out, whatever. But for right now, it's probably worth a, you know having a certain degree of caution after the run-up we've seen in stocks and the ridiculous you know, moves that we've seen across the board. You've got the Federal Reserve on Wednesday. You've got Apple and AMD's earnings. Unless you're an expert at forecasting earnings, I don't recommend that you go running in front of that freight train. If you killed it with us, you know, coming out of last summer uh, through the new year, um, like I told you, your biggest losses come after your biggest gains. So be careful. You know, if you kill this thing, your confidence always going to make you walk in here when you don't need to. Know when to play and know when to sit on your hands. If you're dealing with stocks on this resolution of time, they're counterweighting, right? Let them chill. Do the things that you did that made you make your biggest money. If you played into the trend in this wave and you found you did really well doing that, then make sure you plant another version of the same thing later. And don't sit here chasing every single candle until it becomes it again. Let it back off and let it do its thing. Um, so in this resolution, you know, kind of a wait and see attitude is like the best case for what we can do. Um, guys, gold's been really strong. I think, uh, oops, let me get this out of here. Huh. Is that what we drew last time? <laughs> That's crazy. I don't remember doing that one. Oh yeah, I did this with you guys. So, well, that's neat. That's a shockwave that should have formed a bit if he's up there. So, this is uh, this is uh, what we had looked at. We had a big old bull flag. I had him in the weekly setup because I had next to, you know, next to what you call it, to uh, the gold fractal for BTC. But yeah, he broke the same angle, very much like Bitcoin, right? And Bitcoin came out and he structures a flag like over here. That's kind of what he's got going on right now. And you can see, like, you can let him structure out. Even if that comes out, he doesn't really establish a, a new range. Even if he breaks out of the angle, it takes him a minute before he does it. You know, now this is where he looks like he can actually get momentum to push. Um, but yeah, so uh, gold at this minute is not something you want to see generally pushing if you want to see stocks still pushing because gold is a risk off asset. 
um, at this moment. You know, he can push with stocks. If stocks push harder, then he technically underperforms him. Technically, then he's still risk off. But there's definitely some stuff going on in the marketplace right now warrants a degree of caution. And you have enough events this week that any one of them could, you know, be crazy combined as Trump's mouth. So it's been a big run. Um, if you, you know, have done good risk management, you have some winners locked in and you don't have the ability to give, give back anything, you've got free rolls left in the market, you know, let those guys ride. Um, or, you know, just to whatever your plan is. If you, have, if you don't know the VIX, get to know the VIX. This guy is a barometer for volatility in the markets. Uh, he is the craziest shit is in the markets. When this guy breaks out of these patterns, Armageddon fucking comes to the planet. So he's definitely something you want to be aware of right now. Um, at this moment, he holds that trend line. We can pump towards highs again. He blows his trend line out. This becomes the monster version of what this guy was right here. And this is the 2018 fucking crash in the market. So you, let's look at the S&P 500. He has inverse relationship to this guy. This is the fear. When this guy pumps, Armageddon happens to stocks. So we don't want to see that, right? As long as he's in a falling structure, stocks can pump. And right now he's got a perfect trend line tag. So if he manages to hold this and keeps dumping, stocks will have a, will have a decent bounce. Will they bounce and blow out the high? Can't tell you for sure that, but they will get strength to them if this managed to keep fading. If this actually goes into a bull fucking run and pumps anything like this shit over here and on the scale of coming out of a shockwave of this size, then, you know, the coronavirus might be fucking serious. So, um, definitely something to keep it out.